Isn't that cool? This is your basic potato cannon. If you've never seen one before, here's the deal. It's a big gun that shoots potatoes. With a potato cannon, we can learn the most important thing about engines, combustion. Let's take a look at how you fire this thing. Step one is to load our potato projectile. So we just stick it into the barrel and ram it down. Step two is to take off the back and that will let you see the spark producer that we're using here. You can see that when you turn this knob, you get a nice fat spark. Step three is to load the fuel. There's all kinds of fuels we could use. Gasoline, diesel fuel, even hairspray works as a fuel. We put the back back on and then step four is to aim and fire. The potato weighs about a quarter of a pound and the tiniest bit of gasoline is shooting it hundreds of feet. This is the key thing to understand about engines. The smallest drop of gasoline contains an amazing amount of energy. You can see where all that energy comes from if you think about what's happening. We are igniting gasoline molecules. Here's one now. It's made of nine carbon atoms and 20 hydrogen atoms. When it ignites, it takes oxygen from the air and this single molecule turns into 19 molecules. The mass increases by a factor of 10 and it gives off a ton of heat. The expanding gas generates a lot of pressure. The effect is spectacular. A burst of hot, high-pressure gas blasts the potato out with incredible force. Now here's the thing. What if we use a piston instead of the potato? And what if we attach a crankshaft to the piston? And what if we continuously reload and fire that cannon? Then what we have is the basics of an internal combustion engine like you find in a car. Basically, your car's engine is a highly modified potato cannon. Of course, a real engine, like this tractor engine, is a little more complicated than that. For one thing, it's made out of metal so that it lasts hundreds of thousands of miles. For another, it needs a precise fuel system so it doesn't waste gas. It produces a ton of heat, so you need big radiators to eliminate all of it. But an internal combustion engine is still pretty simple when you look inside. Imagine that you're an air molecule passing through an engine. The first thing you hit is the air filter to take out any dirt. Then you shoot down this tube called the intake manifold. A fuel injector squirts in a little fuel. Then you wait for this valve to open. It's called the intake valve. As soon as it opens, you get sucked into the cylinder. The piston then compresses the air and gas and the spark plug fires. The gas ignites. The piston goes flying the other way from the force, just like a potato cannon. Then the exhaust valve opens. You fly out of the cylinder, go down this exhaust pipe to the catalytic converter, then through the muffler to quiet things down and out the tailpipe. Like I said, an engine looks a lot like a potato cannon. What about a jet engine? A jet engine uses the exact same effect, but differently. A jet engine mixes gasoline with air and burns it, but there is no piston. Instead, the thrust of that expanding gas pushes the jet engine forward. What about a rocket engine? It's the same as a jet, except for one thing. Because a rocket engine operates in space, there is no air to supply the oxygen. So a rocket engine carries the oxygen with it in a tank. You have a fuel tank plus an oxygen tank. You mix the fuel and oxygen together, burn it, and get thrust. You can see that all these different kinds of engines use the same basic principle. They mix a fuel, like gasoline, with oxygen. The oxygen either comes from the air or it comes from an oxygen tank. When you light the gas, it creates this huge expansion, and that expansion provides the power. An engine is all about the expansion of hot gases. Nice. I'm Marshall Brain, and that's how stuff works.